So here we have a um, ground floor flat. Um, you can see the stretcher marks on the bricks, leading me to believe that it's a cavity wall. So we'll be looking for uh, cavity wall drill holes in a pattern. So we can see one here, another one here, all along the same course. There's another one there. So yeah, that's definitely a pattern of drill holes. So we can safely say that it's cavity wall construction, field cavity. And it's a ground floor flat. It's starting to rain, let's get inside. So in here we have an unheated corridor. Pretty empty. And we have a stretch of bonds on the inside of the unheated corridor cavity and I'm not seeing any drill hole patterns as well we have here as well so this one will be an alternate wall because it's an unheated corridor but we'll put down its cavity but not cavity filled so to do that we need to measure the thickness of the wall which here is it's about 250, which is about as thin as we can get for a cavity wall. Just check down this side to see if there's any fill drill holes. No, there are not. In the communal area, there's an electric meter. Mains coming in, fuse. We've got a sticker here from Southern Electric. So when this meter was put in, it had no readings on it. It was blanked, zeroed. And this is the previous readings, rate one, rate two, rate one, rate two. So this is probably, almost certainly, a dual rate meter. If we press this button, we can scroll through. Loads of useless information until we can get to rate one and rate two. Total amount, import. And yet again, a smart meter that doesn't make any sense. But here we've got rate one and rate two. So I'm sure it's a dual rate meter and we have two lives coming out to switch peak and off peak on and off. Draft proofing strip on the um, front door. That goes nicely with the um, UPV several, UPVC double glazing, which we'll look at in a minute. So this f distribution board, has um, the shower, bathroom fan heater and sockets. So this is the peak supply. This fuse board by deduction is the off peak supply. And there we can see all the storage heaters on there and the off peak immersion. Water heater here, that's the off peak immersion. And then if we go back to the peak board, we have the uh, water heater, which is the peak immersion. Since we're talking about the water, meet, water heater, this is a dual immersion, factory fitted spray foam, dual immersion. The bottom element is normally the off peak and the top immersion is normally the peak. So it's a lot cheaper to leave the bottom one on and keep the top one off and only use that as a backup emergency or if you run out of hot water. You can see the two wires going out here. And we've got both switches here. So I've turned the off peak on, on this one. And I've turned the peak on, on this one. Just for a demonstration. So now both of them are turned off and the lights are off. If we turn the bottom one on, the lights is still off. This is the off peak normally at the bottom. This is the peak. If we turn this on, the light will come on. This is the peak rate because it turns on 24 hours a day and uses the expensive electricity. While this one is the off peak one, which comes on normally for seven hours using economy seven tariff, not to be confused with the tele switch, which is soon to be turned off. These um, are smart meters and they have SIM cards in and they turn the peak and turn the off peak on um, based on the time, or based on the SIM card. We have a room here with a low energy light bulb and a high heat retention night storage heater, which is a Dimplex Quantum. 
This model is a QM70RF, which has a, the newer user interface. This is another QM, but it's a 50RF, I believe. Let's put the torch on and have a look. QM50RF, high heat retention storage heater. And in the kitchen, we have another QMRF, and this is a 70. Don't forget to take a photograph of each of the model numbers to keep the auditors happy. This one is an older quantum. You can tell this because it has a hole in the window here. This is just a QM125. As you notice, it doesn't have the letters RF at the end. It has the earlier um, user interface. The main difference between the two is the earlier ones have programmable times to release the heat and a thermostat. And the newer ones have time and temperature control. So you can have a different temperature in the morning and a different programmed and a different temperature in the evening programmed. But on the earlier models, you could turn it up and it would stay up and then turn it down and it would stay down. The newer ones, the temperature changes with each time period. Have a look in the description and I'll put um, instructions on how to use both types. Um, I've made a playlist for those and I'll put the links in the description. These windows are UBVC double glazed and you can see the jar proof strip down here. On the intermittent strip up here, I'm not sure if you can see it, but you can see the date 2002. So these, oh there we are. So these are post 2002 double glazed units. In terms of an EPC, pre 2002 and post 2002 double glazing is a two point difference in general. The main wall thickness of the property is 300 mil, which I'd expect for the age and build type of this flat. Ground floor, solid, as built construction for the floor. Low energy bulbs, this one is a compact fluorescent B22 fitment, also known as a bayonet fitment. This is also a B22 bayonet fitment, but it's an LED bulb. You can tell that by the opaqueness of the surround, but as well as that, if you look at the lumens and the wattage, that's an eight watt bulb. That would be an LED. This looks like a fluorescent bulb, not to be com confused with compact fluorescent, but it isn't. The, um, if it was tubular, then it would be fluorescent, uh, there's no choke on it to start, there's a separate choke to start, therefore it's not compact. But this one here is in fact an LED fitment. If we check that out by turning it on, there was no flicker and there was no, none of that choke trying to start it up, flick, flick, flick when it was trying to turn on. So that's LED. But the difference in the EPC between fluorescent compact fluorescent and LED, they're all low energy bulbs. But halogen bulbs and incandescent aren't counted as low energy bulbs. So I looked on the EPC register and this uh, property had an EPC. Um, it scored a D68, which has expired. I had a look at the, um, uh, the heating type on the EPC and it said it had the old um, storage heaters. Uh, the manual charge controls, I think they're called modern slimline, and um, yeah, it did score D68. Now, having high heat retention storage heaters put into the property can add a good seven points, but it's already quite high at the D68 score, so I'm thinking this property will end up scoring around about C75, but we'll have to see. Anyway, let's get writing it up. So, it's a rental and it's social. And it's a flat and it's there's no shared wall so it's detached okay it's suburban and there's no extensions there's no mains gas and it has a dual rate electric meter i'm going to measure it internally and it's ground floor and it's zero flat floor position the corridor is unheated i will also have to measure that too 
The number of heated habitable rooms is um, three, actually two, because the kitchen isn't big enough to have a table with four chairs in it. So two heated habitable rooms, that's a bedroom and a lounge. There are nine fixed outlets for LEDs and also compact fluorescents, and they are all low energy bulbs. There's a shower and a bath, but the shower is electric, so we have one, zero, zero. Okay, the build date, I would say, is early 80s, late 70s. So 76 to 82. Now let's do the, um, the main building elements. So the main property has a cavity wall, which is 300 mil thick, and it is filled. There is an alternative wall, which is sheltered. There is no party wall. The um, alternative wall is cavity, just about. And it was 250, two, 250 mil thick, and insulation was as built. The floor was solid, and insulation as built, even though it looks like it's been recently um, had a leveling compound or latex flooring poured over but that's probably because there was asbestos tiles on the floor and they just needed in encasing. Okay, the roof is has another dwelling above, another dwelling above, and there's no room in the roof. So here we are on the glazing. You can't use a low E detector anymore. Auditors don't like them. Normal amount of glazing. Okay, and then we have post 2002 double glazing. And I make a note here of the actual data recorded in the photos. PVC double glazing, 16 mil gap. We don't really need that because it's post 2002. 100% open fires at zero, naturally ventilated. 100% draft proofing because all the UPVC windows have draft proof stripped and we notice the draft proof strip on the front door. Doors, one. Conservatories, none. Water heating, one. And the water heater, is 144 litres okay and then it has spray foam it's 38 mil thick oh and it's a dual immersion secondary heating none and then the main heating is storage heaters and we have the lounge a qm125 the kitchen QM70RF Hall, QM50RF, and Bedroom 1, QM70RF. So I'm thinking that the lounge one was done first, and then these were done later, because these are current models. And like I said, I'll put the playlist to both uh, best usage instructions for those in the description. So, renewables? Nope. And the floor plan? It sticks out a bit further here. That's the front door. This is the unheated corridor. So that is the party wall. So if the property isn't detached, it is semi-detached. That's why I don't like to write them up as I do them. The property isn't detached, it's semi-detached. So it's always good to put them on site notes. Then you have a, um, a moment to reflect and then avoid any mistakes like that. So, I'm not sure if the party wall comes. No, it doesn't. Nope. So that's heat loss perimeter, heat loss perimeter, and heat loss perimeter. Bedroom one, WC, hot water storage vessel, kitchen, and lounge. Okay, so the measurements we need is this one, this one, this one, and this one. To do my measurements, I use the Lekia Disto D2. Amazing bit of kit, definitely recommend it. I'll put the um, link to 
what's in my bag i'll put that in the description and uh, all the other things that i have in my bag you can uh, check out so first of all turn it on press the function button and we're on meters squared put it against the wall put my finger on the button check the red dot on the other side of the room fire and that is 7.831 now we want the depth of the property. Five, five, seven, five. Five, five, seven, five. Sorry, five, five. No, it is five, that's right. Five, five, seven, five. And then the width, seven, eight, three, one. Okay, now we want to measure this bit and that bit. Make a note of the meter squared. So we have that depth, then we want to minus off this depth, and then that's so it sticks out to 1.502, and then the width. Four, two, three, zero. So we want to times that by that, and then we know the area of that, and then add it to that. So 1.502 times 4.230 is 6.35346. So add those together, and we get 50.01. 50.01 meters squared. And then we want ceiling height. 229, 229, and then what we need to do here, this is the, um, the heated, uh, the unheated corridor, so 1502, add the width minus off this width. Okay, so this minus this equals that, so 3.601. It only really works if all the uh, corners are right angles and on this property they are. Um, so that's um, that distance. Now we need to add this length to this length and that gives us the unheated corridor. And that's 5.103, 5.10 length of unheated corridor. And now we want the heat loss perimeter and also the party wall. Well, the party wall is pretty straightforward. So 4.23. And then the, the um, heat loss perimeter is this one, add this one, add this, add that. And then the heat loss perimeter is 20.48. And there we go. So let's have a look at the uh, previous EPC. You can see there that it scores D68. And um, this one now scores, I'm not sure yet, I have to work it out, but um, I'll pop it up on the screen here. Um, and that's quite a large improvement, um, but it was already scoring pretty good at the um, D69. It's only one point away from a C, but you can see what high heat retention heat storage heaters have done in, in improving the score. Anyway, thanks for watching and don't forget to like and subscribe.